So here we have an initial value problem involving a first order system of ODEs and an initial condition on the right. And we're asked to solve. Now, in this, in this uh, presentation, I'm going to show you an alternative to matrix methods for solving this, uh, this kind of problem. Okay, now you may be able to solve it using matrix methods, okay, if that's great. But I'm going to show you an alternative, a simple alternative. Okay, and in fact, I would argue that the, the method that I'm going to show you now is much simpler and it's perfect for people who haven't learnt matrices. Okay, so for example, you know, anybody who can, uh, the, the method I'm going to show you now essentially relies on being able to solve second order, linear, constant coefficient problems, which we know from first year. Okay? So let me show you. Essentially, we've got two simultaneous equations in that system of ODEs. And what we're going to do is just play with them, and I'll show you how to solve them without ever calculating the eigenvalues or the eigenvectors of the, of the matrix A. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. So we actually have two systems of simultaneous equations here. Written like this. Okay? So what I'm going to do is actually work on one of these problems and through a bit of elimination, I'm going to form a second order differential equation, which we can solve. Okay? So let's call this 1 and 2. So if we differentiate both sides of 1, OK, on the left-hand side, I'm going to get x double dash. By the dashes, I mean regular derivatives with respect to t, dx dt, dy dt. OK, so if I rearrange this, I'll get the following. Now, this is almost, well, almost a second order problem only in x and x prime and x double prime, except for this y. Uh, sorry, the, sorry, the y dash. The y dash. So what I can do now is actually eliminate that y dash by using the second equation. Okay, now I still have a y in there, but I can manage that away from the first equation. Okay, so... So I'm going to get um, okay. So y dash from the second equation is this. So I'm going to replace y dash with that. And you can see, okay, well I've got an extra some extra x's in there, but also a y. So I've almost got a second order problem in x alone, an x prime and x double prime. Lastly, I'm going to get rid of this. This y here. Okay, so if I expand that bracket out, I'll get something like this. Now, what I can do is use equation one, just rearrange it, so make y the subject in equation one, and uh, replace y down here with x and x primes. Okay, so if I uh, simplify here, I'll get something like the following. Oh, 
you're right, let me change that. Sorry, I wrote down the wrong thing. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so now, assuming we can do our algebra, now we have a second order homogeneous ODE, x double prime plus 4x prime plus 4x equals 0. Okay. So how do we solve it? Well, we look at the characteristic uh, ODE, uh, the characteristic equation. Okay, so it's going to be R squared plus 4R plus 4 equals 0. And what we do is we look at the root, uh, well, I guess the solutions to that uh, characteristic equation. I can factorize it pretty easily. Okay, it's uh, R plus 2 all squared equals 0. So we get r equals minus 2 and minus 2, a repeated root. So we know when we have repeated roots, the solution to my second order problem is just a linear combination of uh, exponential and the independent er variable times an exponential. So e to the minus 2t and t times e to the minus 2t for this problem. So A and B here are constants. Okay, so we've kind of come up with half of our general solution to our system. We've got x, x of t. What we would like to do now is come up with the general solution for y. So how do we do that? Well, that's the next step. Okay, so what we're going to do is actually use the first equation. We know what x is, right? So we can always determine the derivative of x. So actually I can rearrange the equation 1 and make y the subject. Okay, so... So this is just a, a sort of a rearranged version of 1. And I've got 9y out on the left-hand side. I could have y, but I'm just going to keep it as 9y for now. So using my general solution for x on the previous page, what I can do is differentiate this and take, take the original function away from itself, and then I'll get an expression for 9y after I rearrange. Okay, so if I differentiate this just using the product rule and then I group the like terms together. So after I do the differentiations, I'm going to get things involving e to the minus 2t and terms involving t times e to the minus 2t. Okay, so if I differentiate and... just simplify a little bit. I'll get the following. So to get y, all I do is divide both sides by 9.
And there I've got my solution, my general solution for y. Now note that I've got the y in terms of the general constants that appeared in x. Okay, the a's and the b's. Okay, so the question now is, can I calculate those A's and B's? And the answer is yes, because I have an initial condition. Okay? So I guess this is uh, step three of the solution. So I guess this was one, two, and now we're on to the last step. So we apply the initial condition to determine our constants A and B. Okay, so there are our two solutions. We know that when t equals 0, x equals positive 1. So let's go up here and plug in t equals 0. So that's going to become a and that's going to become 0. Okay, so we immediately have a. The second, uh, well, I think the second part of the initial condition, when t equals 0, y equals minus 1 or negative 1. So we go up here, plug in t equals 0, and set the whole thing equal to minus 1. So that'll become 0. Uh, sorry, yeah, that'll become 1. That'll become 0. OK, so two equations, two unknowns. In fact, we already know what A is. B will equal negative 6. So our final answer. is just determined from going back and plugging in A equals minus 1, B equals minus 6 into both our uh, sort of component uh, solutions. So if A is 1 and B is minus 6, that should give us minus 1 there, or negative 1. And that will give us something like positive 2. OK, so that is the solution for our system with initial conditions. Now, the, the question is, How tractable is this method, right? Like, if we, if we, you know, if, if you're asked to solve a system like that, could you use this method to do it? Of course you could. Okay? The tremendous advantage in this method is that it, it relies on things you already know. Okay? I, just basic second order problems. You don't have to know any matrix theory to be able to solve uh, using this method. But it's a reasonably longer process, right? 